Welcome guys to another tutorial. In this video we're gonna learn how to build a sandwich runner MEV flash bot in 20 minutes so that you can make money from transactions completely passively. A sandwich bot. It makes money by buying before a buyer so you see a transaction someone buys say die and you make a profit from that information because you buy before them and then you sell after the price increase. So for example John buys 100 die he's willing to accept 95 die because there's slippage. The MEV bot sees that in the mempool he pushes the price so John gets less tokens for slippage and then he sells for a profit we'll see that in a moment how that works let me show you a real flashbot this is one that i made took me a few months to develop as you can see it's capturing transactions it checks whether it's going to uniswap or to another interest exchange and then it tries to calculate a profit by estimating how much you get from buying before him and selling after the transaction is completed this is using flashbots entirely all right guys check this new project i've created it's called mev dao and it's simply a community where we will be building mev tools right now i have a flashbot that does front running sandwiching for decentralized exchanges for uniswap PageSwap, shiba swap and others and it's a very good bot it's not making money yet but it's a very advanced bot it calculates everything super fast there's a lot of complexity there and we can make it profitable if we just work a bit on it a bit and then i also have a sniper bot that uses flashbots which allows us to snipe tokens much easily than others we can get at the best position possible right before everybody buys getting a very big discount on sniping the telegram link is t.me slash mevdao this is the logo and i've created this group very recently so just join here start talking we'll create a token and build a team that will help us develop this properly and move much faster so that we dominate the entire flashbots market because only one person only one team can dominate and get most of the opportunities you know so check it out go ahead and develop the program so this is the tutorial create a new project folder and yeah these are the steps the first thing we need to do is we need to install ethers we need to install ethers 572 because this is the one used by flashbots so let's do yarn at ethers at 572 and then we need to install flashbots ethers provider bundle this is the one that we need we need to make flashbot transactions yeah we need to set up ethers the required variables the contracts and the start function then we set up the abis and byte codes then the variables the contracts providers create the start function to listen to transactions because that's the first step then we will decode uniswap universal router transactions in the past you uniswap made transactions directly to the router but now they have a universal router then we set up the initial checks to make sure the transaction is going to the router and then we make sure it is filling our parameters we process the transaction we get the and store the reserves that's how you make sure you can calculate how much you get before the buyer and things like that then we calculate the gas cost this is very important because we'll need that then the amount in the amount out that's just, that's how much you put in how much you get out per the first transaction the second the third and the last in this case there are four transactions and they, these are the next steps that we'll see at the end so let's go ahead the first step is to set up ether so code the following except wallet and ethers then require ethers then we access the flashbots bundle provider and the flashbots bundle resolution from from this package I'm trying to go fast because this is a very time consuming process anyway we need the flashbots i mean the abis and bytecodes i have everything set up here we need the uniswap abi the uniswap v2 bytecode then we need the factory uniswap factory this is the one that generates pairs we'll use that the bytecode the pair abi the pair bytecode the ERC20 ABI, the bytecode, and the Uniswap V3 ABI. This is to process universal router transactions. So yeah, you can get them on Remix. If you go to Remix, you can paste the code and access everything there. I just put everything here for simplicity, but if you go to Remix, let me show. If you go to Remix and uh, let's say, yeah, let's say you want this ABI and bytecode, you go here and you copy the ABI, you see, and the bytecode. Make sure to select the contract you want and those are the things you need because we will use those contracts so once you have all of these variables we can go ahead and set up the modifiable variables the first one is flashbots url we need the url of flashbots in this case we will use guerly it's called flashbots i mean relay guerly.flashbots.net for testing purposes if you want to use the final version you need to use simply this url because you need to test it first before going further then we need the get i mean the with address this is for guerly the mainnet address is different then we need the uniswap v2 router address then the factory address the universal router and do you need a provider for for accessing for reading transaction this is just a connection to a node that reads and accepts transaction i'm using 
chain stack you can do the same it's a very very good company they give you like 3 million transactions a month for free you can pay to get more and then you need a private key with some worry in here so yeah let me copy all this and paste it here these are the um, the Guerli addresses. If you want the main net addresses, you will have to look up, look them up on Etherscan or somewhere else. So now let's set up the provider. I will change this by the way, just so you know. So now we need a provider, and that is new Ethers providers JSON RPC provider. Then we simply pass the HTTP provider URL, and then we need the WebSocket provider. This is a very a real time connection to the blockchain, and we need this because this gives us that information that comes to the mempool. This is the most important aspect of it. Web socket, I believe it's called it a web socket provider. Provider URL. You pass the URL and you get that. Second. Let me check my notes. Great, now we need the um, yeah. The third step is to set up the contracts. So first we need the wallet. I'll call it sign in wallet. You simply do new wallet, you pass the private key. By the way, you, the private key, you can get that by doing Ganache CLI, you see? You get a bunch of private keys, you simply use one of those, or you can get one from MetaMask. Okay, now, once you have that, the wallet is started, we simply need to connect it. One second. Yeah, we need to connect that to the provider so that it's connected to the blockchain. Then we create the um, Uniswap v3 interface. We'll need this to read transactions from the universal router. The universal router is where all the swaps go. The Uniswap v2 swaps and Uniswap v3 swaps. We're gonna we're gonna front run. We're gonna sandwich Uniswap transactions. Just to be clear. Okay. So now we send to the new ethers utils dot utils dot interface. I believe. Yeah, interface. And you pass the Uniswap v3 ABI. That's all you need. Then we need to create a factory, Uniswap factory. It's, it's called factory, yeah, I know it's a bit confusing, but that's how it is. So you're doing ethers, contract, factory, yeah, contract factory. Then you pass the ABI. The factory is, like I said, the contract that generates pairs, only that to access the pair, di the pair data. Then we need the bytecode, and finally, the, the signing wallet, I believe the world so that we connect the world to the contract then we create them the ERC 20 factory this will be required for us to approve the swap transaction tokens so we do ethers contract factory same thing we pass the ABI the bytecode and the wallet now the factory a factory contract is just a contract that is used to generate contracts. It's like an interface and like a tool to connect to contracts or to generate contracts, basically. In this case, these are ERC contracts. Now, we need a pair factory. The pair is the, the pair addresses from Uniswap. So we pass the same thing, pair ABI, pair bytecode, and the signing wallet. Then finally, we need the Uniswap contract if there's contract factory and uh, yeah we pass the same thing Uniswap ABI this is v2 the v2 Uniswap the sign wallet now because we want to use Uniswap directly we don't we know the address already we simply do attach right after and we pass the Uniswap router there then we create a variable called flashbots provider. This we'll set it up in a moment, but for now we'll do it like this. So now we need to create the the first step is to listen to transactions. We gotta receive all the transactions that are pending in the mempool. For that we create an async function called start. And you simply start it up. The first thing that we do in this function, let me check my notes, is to set up the flashbots provider. The flashbots provider is our connection to the blockchain, to flashbots and uh, you do like so you get the flashbots bundle provider then one second hmm. let me check this real quick and you do like so provider sign your wallet and the flashbots url 
Now we need to set up a message console log that says listening on transactions for the chain ID. Chain ID. Now we need that chain ID in case we want to modify this contract and make it available for for the minute. Right now we're using the chain ID five, which is go early. And we simply start the listener. This is how we listen to transaction transactions. We say WebSocket provider on pending, and this will for every pending transaction for every transaction mempool we get a transaction hash. This is the hash of the transaction that we will process. So simply the process transaction. We pass the transaction there. Now this is how we are going to listen to transactions. We are going to receive a lot of information. So let's try this out and see if it works. We simply console log tx, and you will see how we are getting basic tutorial. How we are getting all of these transactions? Wait a minute. Okay, so the issue is that we need to use create, await create. Now that will work. Let's run this. Providers. Okay, you see it's starting up and now we are listening to transactions. You see all of these are transactions that are pending that are being received to that particular node, to that particular blockchain node. And we are simply going to access every single one of them. We're going to check that we are receiving the right information. We're going to see that it's going to the router. And uh, yeah, right after we are going to process that, we're going to take the profit, buy before the user and sell for a profit, taking advantage of slippage. Okay. Now for that we need to create um, a process transaction function. Let me put this down there because this is the last thing that is executed. Let me create a function called process transaction. We receive simply a transaction string and we go ahead and develop this. One second, let me check my notes. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do is we gotta check that the transaction is going to the universal router. I'm gonna check that it's a buy because we want people to going to capture transactions where people swap ether for a token that way we can swap ether ourselves and after they swap their ether we sell the token for some more ether back for that we create a function called initial checks create a variable called checks passed and then we await initial checks and we pass the transaction can make can make this a sync i'm going to log this just to see the results and first let me go ahead and create this function and put this down here you see there are multiple steps const initial checks is a, a sync function that takes the transaction hash and does a few things we we'll need to create a few variables first a variable called transaction is going to be empty for now and um, yeah, first what we do is we get the information from the transaction, all the, you know, where it's going, what data it is included, the value, the cast, all, all that information is included in the transaction. And for that, we do the following. We do a try catch for the, for the transaction and we do await provider get transaction TX. This will give us transaction. If something goes wrong, simply return false and stop checking this particular transaction. Otherwise we continue. So. We gotta make sure that, that the transaction is valid. For that, we, we do these checks because sometimes the transaction is empty. For some reason, it's empty. Maybe it's cancelled or something. Then it could be that the transaction, the two field, is empty. This is something that I found. Sometimes it's empty. And we are gonna make sure we are not catching our own transactions because we will send transactions using flashbots. Although this is not necessary. So we simply return false if those things happen. Now we we are simply checking that the transaction is valid at this point. Now if there is no value, meaning transaction.value is zero, this means there is no ether being sent along with the transaction, meaning people are not swapping ether for another token. Those are the transactions we want to capture. So if, if that's not the case, if it's zero, we return that. Now we check that the transaction goes to let me do to lowercase. The two transaction dot two property is the target of the transaction where it is going. We gotta make sure it is going to the universal router. So we take the others. Now we compare it to lowercase two. If this transaction goes to the universal router, 
then we continue. In fact, if this is a simpler way, if it's not to the universal router, we simply return false, then we can continue. So once we are sure the transaction is going to the universal router, to the Uniswap universal router, we start to process the transaction. We need to read all of the information like about the transaction. When you send a transaction, you receive a few information. Let me, let me show you the transaction data so that you are certain of what's going on. So this transaction will be going here. Let me run this so you can see what I mean. So it's returning false some multiple checks. That's fine. To the universal router. You see there's one there. We have the hash, we have the type. It can be type one, I mean type zero or type two. Type zero means you only have gas limit and gas price. Type two means you have a base gas, which is not shown here, but there's a mass pri max priority fee and a max fee per gas. These are just technicalities. So it tells us that it's coming from this user, the price is that one, max fee. The priority fee is that the max fee gas limit to you see all of these values and this one is that is the one that we are interested in the value because this tells us how much ether it is being sent to the universal router for the swap and this data property this is the one where all the information regarding the swap is contained like what token are you swapping how much you want to get what is your minimum amount out for slippage this is this contains all the information that we want we will access that in a moment so for us to access that information we need to decode it for that we do a try catch return false if it's you know invalid for whatever reason and we create um, a variable called decoded this variable simply does the following decoded we take the uniswap v3 interface using interface and we do parse transaction we pass transaction what this does is this shows us all the information that is in the transaction let me show you what it's inside just to be clear because i want you to be very certain of what's going on because it gets complex very fast this let's wait a minute okay there you go you see this is the decoded transaction we have the arguments the first parameter is the commands in uniswap in universal router there is a every transaction goes through the execute transaction this is the function execute and the first parameter is the commands every single bit of it every two characters is a command in this case this could be wrapping ether this could be swapping for uniswap v3 which is the case i believe and then we have the the array of data this argument tells us okay let's swap this amount of ether into wrapped ether and this is telling us okay i want to swap this token for that other token now right now it's a bit confusing you, you cannot read this so we need to decode it again to see what is inside that input.